On one side is the idea that there's something unique and special about men and women coming together in marriage and no other union of whatever kind is, 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 is the same thing as marriage. There's something special and unique about marriage that's in the best interest of society and culture. And there's the second idea, and I hear it in what you were just saying, but it, it comes out more clearly in debates when I ask point blank um, the question to folks I'm debating with. And the idea is there is nothing uh, morally different between men and men, women and women, and men and women united together. They're all the same. And folks that think that there is, folks like me, uh, uh, people uh, you know, largely of, of uh, religious faith communities that because of their faith believe that this is the case, or, or people, again, who, who may not be because of religion believe that this is the case, that we are the equivalent of racists and bigots. This comes up time and time again, and frankly, I think it's wrong. I don't think it's based on the facts of the argument. I don't think that it furthers the argument. I, and I think that it does create this impasse. But to say point blank that the, that the Bible is a pro-slavery document is just point blank false. What you're essentially saying is your interpretation trumps that of Frederick Douglass, of Harriet Beecher Stowe, of William Wilberforce, of William Lloyd Garrison, and all of the abolitionists who pointed directly to the, the, uh, the, ver the um, book of the Bible that you t attempt to justify this notion that the Bible is pro-slavery, Philemon, they all pointed to Philemon to say, look what Paul does. Paul tells Onesimus, uh, he tells Philemon to, to take Onesimus back, not as a slave, but as a brother, a dear brother in Christ. And this gets to the heart of, of what Christianity is to the world and Christianity's view on traditional sexual morality. Christianity is, if anything, radical. It's radical in its view of human dignity, of the human dignity of each and every one of us. The reason I'm here is because I, I believe in your human dignity. I believe in your human dignity. I'm willing to come and argue with you because of my respect for you. The, the notion, the simplistic notion that because parenthood is connected with marriage, because marriage is that institution by which society connects children to their biological mothers and fathers, the simplistic idea that somehow that means what we're saying is that every single person has to have a child, that's silly. We never claim that. Marriage is the institution that does this. Two men and two women cannot naturally have their own children. There is a mother or father somewhere. Marriage is the institution that connects that child to both their mother and father. And that's why the state is interested in marriage. Marriage is by its definition, it is intrinsically something. It is not simply about your desires. It is not about my desires. Ma so, so marriage to, is a civil, a package of civil rights and legal responsibilities, no longer for any two people. Or one, what about three people or four? The merits of polygamy, and you know, if you want to ban polygamy, po most polygamous marriages have been heterosexual. So if you're worried about the slippery slope, it's heterosexual marriage that puts it, it, us on the slippery it, it slope toward I'm not, polygamy. I'm not making a slippery slope argument here. I'm making an argument based upon logic. I'm saying if your argument is that you want the rights, benefits, and privileges of marriage, and therefore you deserve them and, and I want equal have protection them, under the law. Then why should not someone who wants to marry three, four, or five people? Equal protection under the law, everyone has a right to marry, everyone who's straight has a right to marry someone. Right now, as a gay person, I have a right to marry well, no one. Well, what, what about the right of the person who believes that uh, they, they're in love with two, three, or four people? Jonathan Roche makes a great argument against polygamous marriages well, because they do actual harm, because high-status men then collect Dozens oh, or hundreds of wives, like David like in the, the Bible, like Solomon in the Bible. Me. This is the same. No, I just no. This is un, it's unfair to say to a gay marriage advocate that then we have to make the defense for polygamous marriage or multiple but, marriage when that's not my argument or my fight. Well, Let the polygamists make well, that argument. And those polygamists are all straight. Okay, but just because there it's are no not gay people argument, out there making an argument for polygamous just, marriage. Just because it's not your argument doesn't mean that it naturally follows. If marriage is based primarily about the wishes and the, of the self fulfillment of adults and if the adult definition of marriage and desire for it produces this right, then why doesn't someone have the right to marry two, three, or four people? This, the reason I bring up this point is not because it's going to happen tomorrow. The reason I bring up this point is because if marriage is not intrinsically about bringing the two sexes together, if it is not, that is not what it is. And once you go off into this other area, then you have completely destroyed marriage because it is whatever you want it to be. State money uh, and discriminate. Dan is again 
Please. The Mormon charity is in Massachusetts. No, you, got, you have to let me. More time. Let, you, you, you have to let me respond and at least clarify simple point here. blank untruths. It is untruth. It is a simple untruth, and anyone can look it up. That the reason Massachusetts Boston Catholic Charities lost its tax exempt status was because it was taking state money. That is verifiably point blank false. That was not the reason the state gave. The state said you are discriminating by not placing kids with same-sex couples. It has nothing to do with state money. So that, that is just wrong. In New York and in other states, you have not seen large numbers of same-sex marriages, but you've still seen uh, justices of the, of the peace uh, told they can no longer have their job. You are still state seen, employees well, again, with a and you state think, function. And you think do, you think a justice of, do you think a justice of the peace on, belief, on faith grounds should be able to deny a marriage license, signing a marriage license for an interfaith couple because it violates their religious principles. Of course principles. not, and, and I don't think that it should happen for uh, interracial marriages either, but those are totally different things. Again, you're comparing apples to oranges. I'm comparing one kind of discrimination to another kind no, of No, it isn't discrimination. That's where we disagree. If it was discrimination, I would support your position. It's not discrimination it to discrimination. call an apple an apple discrimination and an orange between an orange. two different kinds of couples based on no, the gender then, then, orientations of those couples. Then I can have the same argument, what I laid out earlier. Why are you not discriminating against folks who believe that they can marry two, three, or four people. This whole discrimination language is false because before you ever get to this point, you have to show that somehow it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. Unions of two men and two women are not the same. Because They're, they can't produce a child. Well, that's one very, very that's the one clear that reality. Keep hammering away at. Well, they also don't bring the two halves of humanity together. We believe, I believe, there's something important in that union that that there are two halves of humanity, bringing those two halves together in, in a faithful, uh, committed, monogamous relationship is very, very so important. I, there is no doubt in my mind that the reason we're even debating this topic, the reason this topic really doesn't come up until quite recently, is because only in a society that has, has lost the conception of marriage as being intricately tied to parenthood and children, about children's real needs rather than adult desires, only at that point do we see Western cultures especially embracing this new notion of marriage where it could actually be same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you, you brought up the issue of divorce. Uh, do I believe in divorce? No. Uh, Aquinas says that, that, you know, there are obviously laws have to fit a certain culture and a culture with widespread divorce trying to make something, you know, illegal is wrong. But I think we should make it a lot more difficult. I think that no-fault divorce should go, go away uh, and that that this, the gold standard for public policy should be that marriage is the lifelong commitment of one man and one woman.